Welcome to the Dream Big, My Friend podcast, where you will find all the inspiration you need to begin living a more intentional life today. Because no matter where you are right now in life, it's never too late to dream big, my friend. And now here's your host, Francis Vitakovic. Hello, my friend, and welcome to the Dream Being My Friend podcast. This is your host, Francis Vitakovic, and this episode is all about putting down your phone. I'm going to share with you three specific tips that I've just implemented over the last week that have really helped reduce the amount of time that I spend on my phone. So I should say, before I dive in, that I'm someone that I think has been pretty good at managing how much time I spend on my phone. I've set really clear boundaries. I've eliminated, like I've deleted Facebook and Instagram off my phone. I've gotten really good at reducing the time that I spend mindlessly scrolling through social media. But even still, I started to notice that quietly, the amount of time that I was spending on my phone started to increase over the last few months. And it was really weird because I was doing it in what I thought were productive ways. Like I found that I was actually really shocked to see how much time I was spending on my phone doing what I thought were really productive tasks, like listening to podcasts. I could do that hours a day. I was like doing research, you know, I thought that was being really productive, but it was just all increasing how much time I spent on my phone. So the thing that I've done over the last week that has been a total game changer is I I've bought this clear perspex box where my phone now goes into and it's almost like it's in time out right now. So rather than having my phone near me, like I normally put it away in another room anyway, but I started to feel quite cocky about how well I was managing my time. So I found more often that the phone would be near me in the office and whenever my kids would text me, I would respond. I've always had clear boundaries set about responding to people outside of my family. Like they had to wait until I was off on a walk and then I'll return all my call and text during that time. But I made an exception for my family. But then for some reason, like those texts became a lot more frequent. So I needed to revisit those boundaries and they all saw that I have this new little box that my phone is going into. And I tell them like that, my phone is going to be sitting in that box for many hours in the day. So if you text me, I might not be able to respond straight away. And that has really helped me like eliminate all that, just reaching for my phone without thinking too much about the fact that it is actually eating up my precious time every day. Because what I was finding is I would respond to one of their texts and then I would go and check my email and I do these other little things. So what started as like a one minute task, would become five minutes and 10 minutes. So that's my tip number one. I recommend that you buy a particular box that you can put your phone into, into timeout, and just have the intention, like set that intention that you are planning not to touch your phone as often as you used to. And you can actually go into your screen time and work out and discover like for yourself, how often do you spend on your phone? How many times do you actually pick it up throughout the day? And for me, it's my goal just to reduce that number from here on. Okay. Like if I touched it 20 times yesterday, today I'm going to be trying to touch it 15 times or 10 times or less. Okay. That is my goal. And now for the second tip that I have when it comes to getting off my phone, it's deciding to do tasks that I used to do on my phone on my laptop instead. So I'm speaking specifically about emails here. So I used to set aside a time in the morning and in the afternoon for me to check my emails on my phone. I would often do it when I woke up. I just like clear my inbox and then I'd check again in the afternoon. But like I said, what I was finding was doing it more often. It sort of like crept up really slowly and then it became way more often. I was checking it way more than twice a day. So now I've decided I'm not going to check emails on my phone at all anymore. Like I haven't eliminated it from my phone. I still have that up there, but any email checking now happens on my laptop and I don't have any notifications on. Like that's one of those things, like a basic thing that you should do is making sure that all of your notifications are off. And I can't even check my phone now to tell you what my notifications are switched on for, but I'm pretty sure that it's been turned off for every single thing other than phone messages and text messages. So my phone app and my message app have notifications switched on but there's no sound. Like I've actually switched the sound off. So whenever I go and finally touch my phone, I can see if I've received a phone call and I can see if I've received a message, but it's not alerting me like throughout the day, unless it's really important. So the phone calls, I've kept the sound on just for my favorites. Like it's got my husband and two kids and my mum and dad, and that's it. 
anyone else gives me a call, like I'll see it when I touch my phone, but I won't actually hear it. So with regards to emails, let's have a conversation about emails. For me, I like to keep my inbox as clear as possible. Now, in an ideal world, there would be zero emails sitting in my inbox, but at the moment, I know there's actually one. And that one email is actually related to a task I need to do. So I've added that task into my calendar because it's not just an email that I can respond to, like I actually need to take an action in order for me to be able to respond. So when you have something that needs to be done, write it in your calendar, put it on your to-do list, because otherwise you might find that the email just sits there waiting for your attention, and yet you actually haven't put time aside in your calendar to get the task done. So what I really also recommend is if you have more than 10 emails in your inbox, I want you to schedule some time into your diary to totally clear it out. So I did this for myself the other day, because I think I had like maybe 10 emails. And the reason that they were just sitting there is that they required some time for me to really think about the responses that I had to give. And so I set that time aside. I answered them all. I filed them away. And from here on, like as you know, I've just said that I've got one email still sitting there, but anything that comes in from here on, I'm making sure that number one, I unsubscribe to anything or to, from anyone that I don't really care to hear from again. Because if you are subscribed to like a hundred or I don't know how many email lists you're actually on, but those little emails that pop in, they steal your time and those time and those minutes add up. So I really recommend that you unsubscribe for people that you are happy just to like say goodbye to forever because like I said your time is precious and any other emails that come in attend to immediately when you've set that time aside to answer your emails so I make sure like when I check in like twice a day now on my laptop I go through all my emails and I get rid of them I follow them away I respond to them I do what needs to be done so that at the end of that little session that I've spent like looking at my emails I'm back to like one or two max Hey, my friend, I just wanted to pop in and say that if you ever listen to this podcast and think, oh my gosh, like I really wish that I could dig even deeper with this work, I have the best news for you. I now have two affordable signature courses that honestly have the power to transform your life in the most amazing way. The first course is Your Invisible Crown, which is an in-depth program that will teach you exactly how to show up as the best version of yourself every single day, even when life's obstacles pop up. And the second course is Your Magic Wand, which is a 12-week self-coaching program where I'm going to share with you the exact tools and the exact process that I've used while coaching private clients over the last 20 years. This is the closest thing to having a real-life coach by your side without the larger price tag. These courses are seriously unlike any other that you've ever invested in in the past. So starting today, you can freely ditch all the mind drama and grab the tools that you need to not just dream bigger, but to live life with more clarity and intentions. And you can find a link to these two courses inside the podcast description. And I sincerely look forward to connecting with you on a deeper level. And now for the third tip that I have to share with you to help you put down your phone is actually about social media. So on Facebook and Instagram, I don't know how much time you are spending on it, but if you know that that amount is more than half an hour, definitely listen to the tip that I have to share with you. So this is something that I've done myself, even though I don't spend a lot of time on social media, I went on both platforms and I actively consciously decided to unfollow anyone that I had maybe followed in the past, but I didn't really care to hear from them every single time. I open that feed because let's just say if you're following 100 or 200 or 300 people, all of their posts are going to pop up in your feed and you're just going to feel totally overwhelmed. So make a decision today. Who do you consciously want to feel connected to? So a good question to ask yourself when you think about their post is, do they actually make you feel inspired about life? Do you actually enjoy reading their content or does seeing it actually make you feel really crappy? For the most part, it's human nature to compare yourself to others on social media, but sometimes that can comparison game actually just leaves you feeling really negative and makes your own life feel less than. Now, not everyone's going to make you feel that way. Like I know that with Oprah, I love seeing her posts. She makes me feel really inspired, but other people, not so much. So you are the boss of your own time. And I want you to just be aware that every single person that you follow could potentially be stealing your time, time that is really precious to you. So I challenge you to see if you can halve the number of people that you follow. Give it a go. 
For me, just doing this, I feel like I've taken back control of my social media apps. So whenever I do go on, and like I said, I try to limit my time on social media, but if I do go on, I know that the content is created to support me, like my best version of myself, as opposed to being bombarded with all these posts that are making my brain feel like it's just been overloaded with so much information. Because whenever you see that post, you're going to have a thought. And what are the thoughts you were thinking when you are on social media? Are you thinking, oh my gosh, I should be doing this. I should be doing that. You want to have posts that make you feel really grounded and at peace. And if that means you have to eliminate every single person that you were following because the posts aren't making you feel that way, go ahead and do it. Delete everyone. Okay, so before we end this episode, I also wanted to touch upon one of the other reasons that we often touch our phone so many times throughout the day. And I don't think that I've ever heard anyone talk about it, but it's regarding those random ideas and thoughts that we often have throughout the day where we feel compelled to go to Google to find out who was that star in that particular TV show or what year did this particular song came out. Like, I'm not kidding. This is something that I noticed I was doing way too often. I'd be having a conversation with my kids and I'd be referencing something and it's like, oh my gosh, okay, like, let me just go to my phone and double check whatever it is that I'm like trying to rack my brain to remember. And then I end up on Google. And then once again, touching my phone and spending way too long, giving my attention to something that really wasn't in the grand scheme of things that important. So if you're someone that is constantly like going to Google to double check, you know, like listening to a random thought that you had in your brain and you want to know what the answer is. This is where I share with you that there is a time and place for everything. Just because your brain has an idea and you feel like you absolutely need to know the answer right now, that doesn't mean that you need to respond to it. This is almost like if you have a kid in a classroom who is, let's just say, in a maths class and their teacher is trying to teach them a particular equation and he puts up his hand and then asks something about like a random song in the 80s. What year was it released? Okay, for some reason, for most of the things that I actually search like have to do with things in the past, I'm trying to like pinpoint exactly when it happened. I know, totally random. And you and I already know that the teacher wouldn't stop the class to just put that kid's mind at ease and tell them exactly what they want to know. They would have to wait. And that is what I've been training my own brain to do. Whenever I come up with a question that I feel like I need to know the answer to straight away, I just remind myself I am working right now. And maybe I tell myself like at a particular time, maybe it's like four o'clock when I'm prepping dinner and I have some time to myself, I can find out the answer then, but I will wait. Now this requires us to train our brain to do something different because we're so used to having our answers immediately given to us. And for the most part, these answers are at our fingertips inside our phones. But once upon a time, like in the olden days, when I was young, if I wanted to know something, I had to wait till that weekend until I was going to the library and then I'd find a book to find the answers. I learned to be patient and we too can become patient again. This whole obsession with instant gratification like might seem lovely, but it works to our detriment when we have something else that's more important that we need to be focusing on. So remember, like this is going to take some time and some practice, but it is definitely a skill worth developing in yourself because you are going to be more focused, more disciplined. You're going to stay on track, less prone to procrastination when you stop reaching for your phone whenever you get a random ID in your head. And so that's it, my friend three really simple tips to help you put down your phone. Now, it may feel really uncomfortable to begin with to have this free space where your mind is not constantly being bombarded with more information, but I'm telling you, that is when all our best, most creative ideas come from, from that quiet time. And that's why I like consciously pull back from listening to so many podcasts, like always like bombarding my head with more information. I want you to consciously consider giving your brain a break. Let it rest. Let it do nothing. Let it absorb information from the other parts of your life, from your relationships, from your time spent with yourself. For me, I've just noticed a massive difference in my clarity, in my mindset just this past week from putting my phone into that clear box, having it away from me. And I challenge you to do the same just to see if it makes a difference in your own life. So take care as always. You know, I love and appreciate you all. And until next time, dream big, my friend. Thank you so much for listening. If you loved this episode, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out. And if you really loved it, you can show your support by leaving a review on iTunes. For more inspiration, head over to dreambigmyfriend.com, where you will find even more content for all the dreamers out there. Until next time, dream big, my friend.